Welcome to chapter 15 of the Algebra 2 Trig textbook. We're going to be starting a unit on statistics. And we're going to use some common core concepts that are not covered in the book. Moreover, I'm going to skip things in the book. Finally, there's going to be notation in the book that's not standard, and I'm going to go with my notation. So the book will be our source of problems in terms of exercise and homework, but they're not going to be the primary source of material. You're just going to have to come to class and follow along in the notes and the slides to do it. So today we're going to learn how to display data using frequency distributions, dot plots, histograms, and stem plots. And we're also going to compute measures of center, including the mean and the median. Some of this stuff should be pretty familiar to you. If not, then you'll have to catch up. If it is, then you'll be in good position for the material tomorrow. First, we're going to look at what a frequency distribution is. Now, on your sheet, there's a table of test scores and how often each of those test scores appeared. This table is called a frequency distribution because it shows how many times a value appears. So you see how many students got 99s, how many students got 83s, and so on. So you see the score in one column, and you see how many students got that score in the second column. So it tells you how frequent a score appeared in the data set. So here's the table on page 709. You see the different scores. You see how many students got each score. First way to distribute, uh, display this data is called a dot plot. A dot plot uses dots and you plot them. They're the name dot plot. So what you see is a number line here. And on the number line, there's a dot, one dot per value. So you can see at the 75, there are two people that got a 75. When you get to 90, you see two people got a 90 at 90. Uh, 93 you see one person got a 93 and so what happens is you see one person here with a 56 it shows you how many people got each score and there's one dot for each one so we can see right away that the most frequent score was the 84 five students and it also shows you how spread out the distribution is and we'll look at that more tomorrow the next way to display data and this is mainly single variable data is called a histogram and what you see here is a group of intervals equally wide and then they tell you by the height of the rectangle how many times each score appeared in that interval. So the data is grouped into convenient intervals and for each interval a rectangle has a width equal to the interval width and a height equal to the frequency of the data. So we can tell there were more students got scores between 80 and 90 than between 90 and 100 and then any other test score interval. So in example 1a how many students score between a 70 and an 89? Well, we can see that there are six students that got between 70 and 79 and 16 students between 80 and 89. So there were a total of 22 students that scored between a 70 and an 89. Next, we're going to look at how many students took the test, example 1b. The easiest way to do this is to look at your frequency distribution table and just add up all the numbers in that frequency column. That'll tell you how many students took the test because that'll tell tell you how many values there are in the data set. You could also use the histogram. If you add up all the frequencies for the different intervals, you will find that there were 35 students. You will see there's one in this group, there's two in this group, six here, 16 here, and 10 in this group. So you add those all together, there are a total of 35 students that took the test. Example 1c, in what interval does the middle of the distribution occur? The middle is going to be the value that going to have the same number of values above that number and below that number. The middle of the distribution here would be the 18th highest student because there are 35 total, which means for the 18th student there are 17 above and 17 below. And since there are 10 in this group, the 18th highest has to be in the 80 to 90 group. So that's the answer, the 80 to 89 interval. Next, we're going to look at stem plots. Stem plots are another way to display single variable data. The stem can be any number of digits. It's usually one, and we have a key that we can use to describe what the numbers mean. But the stem is, can be any number of digits that are generally written in order downward to the left of a vertical line, which you'll see on the next screen. The leaf is the unit digit, which is written to the right of its stem. The leaf has to be only one digit. So the stem can be any number of digits, but the leaf is always only one digit. Each digit, each leaf represents one value from the data set. Now, the thing with the stem and leaf plot is that each stem 
must contain the same number of possible values for the leaf. In other words, there have to be the same number of possible, possible values for the leaf for each row. So here is the stem plot for the test scores. You see that the stems represent the 10 digits. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 represent 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. The leaves, each leaf represents one student's score. And what you notice is that each leaf can take a value in each row from 0 to 9 for a possible 10 values in each row. And that is one of the characteristics of a stem plot. The number of possible values for each row has to be the same. In this case, it's usually going to be 10. Now, you see how long this is. It's pretty long because we can see how many students got scores in the 80s. But what you can do is do this thing called stem splitting. And now what you see here is I've now split the stems into two groups for every 10 numbers. So here, for each leaf, for the first stem, the possible values are 0 to 4. For the second stem, the possible values are 5 to 9. So there are now five possible values for each stem. Now what you notice is that there's a gap here because no students score between a 60 and a 64. Another characteristic of a stem plot, and for that matter a histogram, is if you have a gap, you make sure you make the gap clear because it tells the reader, hey, there's something missing here. Or not something's missing, but there's a gap between the low score and the next highest score, or sometimes you'll see a gap at the very other side. So the stem plot is a good way to see the shape of the data. You can see there are a lot more scores over here than on the left, on the lower end. Example two, draw a stem plot for the following exercise time. So what I'm gonna have you do is pause the video and do this by yourself, resuming the video when you're ready to go. So the possible stem values are 2, 3, and 4. And what you have to do is put the leaves in chronological or numerical order. I guess not chronological, numerical order. So for the leaf of the 20s, there's a 26, a 28, and another 28. For the 30s, there are three 32s and two 36s. And for the 40s, there's a 40, a 44, a 45, and a 47. Notice again, each leaf takes on one of the values in the data set. Measures of center. Numbers used to describe a set of data are called statistics. So statistics is actually a defined term. It's not just a bunch of numbers. that are used to describe data. And from the data, we can make conclusions, which is beyond the scope of this class, but it's something that you'll learn in stats. We can describe single variable data using three major ways to measure it. The center, the spread, and the shape. Now, the book actually doesn't talk about the shape, but we will because it's in the Common Core. We're going to look at today, we're going to look at the center. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the spread. So the two main ways to measure center are mean and median. So in the book, there's a third way they use to measure center called the mode, which is the term that appears most frequently in the distribution. That's all you need to know about it. And if a homework question asks about it, you know what it is. And most of you probably remember what it is from when you took statistics in junior high or earlier. So here's our list of test scores again. The median of a distribution is the middle number. There are as many numbers greater than the median as there are less than it. In other words, if you laid out all the numbers in numerical order, the median would be the one that's smack dab in the middle. Now that's fine if you have an odd number of values because you're gonna have a single value that has the same number of values above and below it. However, if there are an even number of values, you're going to take the middle two values, because you're not going to have a single center value. You're going to take the middle two values and take the average of those two numbers. In other words, you're going to add them up and divide it by two. Now, one of the things that you'll see in this book is that there's no symbol for the median, but we're going to use the capital M, because that's what most mathematicians and statisticians use. So here, the 35 total scores. So the median is the 18th term because there's 17 above it and 17 below it. In this case, the median is 84. Next, the mean. The mean is the arithmetic average of the numbers. In other words, it's what you think it is. You add up all the numbers, divide it by however many numbers there are. Now, we're going to use the symbol X bar. That's X bar for mean. Now, the book uses the capital M, which I am going to use to refer to the median because that's what everyone else uses. Most statisticians and mathematicians use X bar for the mean. In fact, if you have a TI or a Casio calculator, you will see X bar and that represents the mean. So that's what we're gonna go with here, despite what the book says. 
The sum of all these scores is 2,933, and there are 35 scores altogether. So to find the mean, you just divide 2,933 by 35, and in this case, the mean is about 83.8. .8. And you all know what the mean is. You always ask me on the last test, what was the mean, Mr. Leo? Well, now you know how to calculate it. Not that you didn't know how to do it before. Example 3. Find the median and mean of the distribution of example 2. So you already made a stem plot for this. And the median is the number in the middle. So I'm going to give you a moment to do that. Go ahead and do the mean as well. And resume the video when you're ready. So since there are 12 numbers, the middle two numbers are what we're going to be looking for, the 32 and the 36. Take the average of those two, and our median is 34. The mean is just the average, so you have to add up all 12 numbers and divide it by 12. So the sum happens to be 426, so the mean is 426 divided by 12, or 35.5. Example 4. For the frequency distribution shown, find the median and the mean. So go ahead and try this one yourself, and we will resume the video when you're ready. All right, the median... Since there are 20 total terms, we're going to take the middle two terms. If you laid them all out, there are 7 14, 6 15, 3 16, and 4 17. The average of the 10th and 11th terms is the median, and they are both going to be 15, because you're going to have 15s that are in the middle. So the median is 15. The mean, you're going to add up all the numbers, so it's basically 14 times 7 plus 15 times 6 plus 16 times 3 plus 17 times 4 divided by 20. So that's 304 divided by 20, and the mean is 15.2. So these are both, again, measures of center. And you see that they're both pretty close to each other. That's going to be the case sometimes, but that won't always be the case, and we'll look at that more tomorrow. Example 5, we're going to look at Barry Bonds' home runs by season. Now, Barry Bonds was a slugger for the San Francisco Giants. He's under suspicion for might have, he might have cheated. That's for another day. But these are the home, number of home runs he has hit in a season. Now, these are not in chronological order. I have put them in numerical order for your convenience. And I want you to do three things. First of all, find the median, then find the mean, and then make a histogram, or a stem plot if you will, either one, of the distribution. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to do that, and we will resume the video when you're ready. All right, so the median. There are 22 observations. So n, which I'm going to call lowercase n, that's actually the number of values in the data set. There are 22 of them. Since n is even, the median is the mean of the two center observations, which in this case is 34, because the two central numbers are both 34. So our median is 34. The mean is the total number of home runs divided by the total number of values. So in this case, Bonds has hit a total of 762 home runs. If you add up all the seasons, divide that by 22, and you see that he has averaged 34.6, about 34.6 home runs for his 22 seasons. Finally, there's a histogram. You can see how often he hit how many home runs, and you see that there's a gap here between 50 and 60 and 60 and 70 because his highest home run total was 73, and his next highest was 49. So you can see how many times he hit each in each category, how many home runs. So seven times he hit home runs in the 40s, so that's represented here. Six times he hit it in the 30s, represented here, and so on. Again, leaving the gap between 50, 60, and 70 because he didn't hit any home runs there. So that's enough for the notes, but each of you have a different calculator. And in the next couple of sections, we're going to be using it quite extensively. And I want you to become familiar with your calculator. We have a TI-83, 84, TI-30X2, a Casio FX, I don't know what it's called, but all of them can perform basic statistical calculations. So I would encourage you to look up how to do it on your calculator on Google or YouTube, and you'll see how to do it, and it'll make your life a lot easier. I can show you in class, but it's just better off you'll practice on your own, because that'll save you a lot of aggravation on the quizzes and in the future. That's it for section 15-1. Tomorrow we'll go over 15-2, where we'll look at uh, standard deviation, variance, interquartile range, and other measures of spread.